Rev up your engine! Alright, here we have a quandary. We got a Rev 4. Now all of a sudden it's getting worse gas mileage. Used to go over 300 miles a tank, now it's 250. So what's gone wrong? We we'll check the air filter. Now it does have one of these KN filters, but as you can see with the sun coming through, it's not dirty. So we're gonna check under the hood here. Get inside the car. Plug in the OBD port. Turn it on. And while that's warming up, let's check the mileage. Okay, it's got 259,232 miles on it. Now that's an awful lot of miles. So let's check check out the data stream here. The Toyota, go to automatic selection. It's new enough, it should easily read it. See if it's all right, it's decoding it. And without smart key, here we go, RAV4. Yep, it's got the engine, it's got everything on it. So here we go. We'll do diagnostics, auto scan, and a lot of scan away. No check engine light on, but the tire pressure monitoring system's on, but that's not gonna affect the gas mileage. You see here, the only faults uh, the tire pressure monitoring system it's old i'm sure the batteries have worn up we don't care about that but we're going to go to the engine system here we're going to analyze the data so we go to live data and up it comes all right we'll turn the ac off we'll put it in gear that's how you can check the mass airflow sensor and it's like 2.5 it's pretty good it's about the same size as the engine which is what it should be so that sensor's working correctly you always want to do it in drive with the ac turned off but i'm turning it back on because i'm hot <laughs> and we'll start analyzing everything else engine speed that all looks good so far battery voltage is good now we got the short term and it's adding a tiny amount of fuel zero but it keeps changing. It's subtracting. It's now at zero. It's subtracting again. Long term fuel trim. It's adding fuel. Now you can see abstracting a reasonable amount of fuel. So it's messing with the fuel injectors. You can see the air fuel ratio is bouncing around quite a bit. 0 0.98, 0 0.90. It's uh, it's moving around a little here and there. Uh, nine two. Now I'm gonna turn the AC off again, and we'll watch the airflow sensor. Now you can see the airflow sensor, three point three, three point two six. It's moving around a little. It's not totally stable. First educated guess is I would replace the airflow sensor on this vehicle with the Toyota original one. We'll look at other data. You can see the oxygen sensor is moving around quite a bit. Keeps trying to change to uh, acclimate to make it run right. Now you can see the port injector. The data is moving around quite a bit. With the injector volume, it's, it's staying relatively stable. 0 0.104, 0 0.105. It's still moving around a little. The firing of it, it's getting somewhat red. With all the mileage on this thing, I'm thinking... Ah, something's going on with the fuel injection system. It's making it get somewhat worse gas mileage. I personally would buy an OEM mass airflow sensor and then I would run a full fuel injector cleaner. These Toyota injectors are pretty good, but with all this mileage on it, was it 259,000 miles? The cleaner might make the injectors work better. Injectors are supposed to spray a perfectly upside down conical shape. As they age, they'll spurter around and you'll lose any kind of perfect spray pattern and your gas miles will go down. Now, I'm gonna take it for a ride and see what it does. Now this is a four speed electronically controlled transmission. So we wanna make sure that it's shifting correctly into all four gears. So here we go. One, two, three, Four. We're going 40 miles an hour and it's going about 1300 RPMs. That's totally normal. It's not getting stuck in any gear. If it stayed in gear too long, it would make it get worse gas mileage, but it's not doing that. Now, sometimes if brakes are dragging, you get bad gas mileage. So let's put it in neutral. And as we can see, it's still gliding quite well, even though we're going slightly uphill. So the brakes are definitely not dragging on this thing. Now I did notice that it had one of those can and oiled filters. You gotta clean them and oil them. But if you put too much oil, that oil can get sucked into the mass airflow sensor, which can damage it, make it go bad, give bad data. Something that simple could make it go bad. Personally, I'm not a fan of those oiled filters. The paper ones never had any problems. I would stick to that myself. Filters in here and the air goes that way. Sometimes that can contaminate the sensors inside and cause all that problem. Now I see this quite often on Toyotas with that kind of mileage on it. They still run like a clock. 
and they shift like a dream, the gas mileage goes down. I'm gonna find out over time, because I told them, get rid of that oiled filter and put in a regular paper filter so you won't get oil and ruin the new mass airflow sensor. He's gonna put two cans of Chevron Tecron in a gas tank and one tank of Shell Super on that gas to help clean the system out. I'll find out in a few weeks drives it around. Now if it doesn't fix it, it may possibly need new fuel injectors. They will wear out over time and stop spraying a conical shape, then they're inefficient. It's not really going to affect how it drives all that much. To a computer, yeah, that data we saw, you could see those numbers jumble around, 24, 2499, 2499, 2501. It can affect that, but you're not really going to feel it because that thing ran perfectly fine. If somebody would have brought me that vehicle and they were gonna buy it, I'd say, well, it's got a lot of miles, but it still runs pretty good. Don't pay too much with that high mileage, but it's still a good running car. It is getting about 50 miles less per tank. Now, that's not all that much when you think about it. We don't have true accuracy here because we'd have to drive it on a racetrack and see what it actually got at what speed and compare it to how it did a long time ago, which would have had to been the same exact test. There's a lot of things that can affect gas mileage. But in this case, pretty good news. The computer showed hardly anything's wrong with this vehicle other than one of the tire pressure monitor sensors is broken on one of the tires, which he doesn't care about. He just fills the tires up with air every month or so to make sure they're full. That's no big deal. Why spend a bunch of money on that? Still a very good solid car, but these tiny little things can make the gas mileage go off like that. Now you know how to check it, what you can do yourself. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Max Hogan says, what are your experiences been with 2000 to 2005 Cadillac North Star engines? Well, now that's kind of a racing design. They put out a lot of power, but it's a gigantic butt. They blow head gaskets like no tomorrow, and when you have to rebuild them, they cost too much money because of their design. You rebuild one of those engines, you can spend five to ten thousand dollars, and by then the cars aren't even worth it. I've had so many customers have North Star engines, they ended up sending them to the junkyards when the engines went out. Because it's not a thing, oh, go get one in the junkyard. Well, they're all made that way. You get one in the junkyard that'll fit, odds are it's already shot or it's almost shot. When you put it in, you're going to have it blow up soon after. It was just kind of a disgrace. They sold them to the public. That's Cadillac for you. They don't really care. It's just GM. Fancy GM. Back in my grandfather's day, they used to say, it's the Cadillac of this or that, saying it's the best. Well, nobody says that anymore, and for good reasons. If they say it's the Cadillac of that, it generally means it's a crappy piece of junk that costs too much and falls apart to work. <laughs> Vanilla Taco says, <laughs> what do you think of a 1989 Acura Legend? You know, back in the day, those were great luxury cars. I had a customer who bought the first one sold in Houston. They loved it. They drove it 300,000 miles. They were great cars. V6, very luxurious. Honda's first big, even though they call it Acura, the fancy Honda's, first big luxury car. They're great cars. But of course, now you're talking about what? 32 year old car. It is an old car. If you're going to buy one, have a mechanic check it. If he says it's okay, don't pay much. They're not worth anything. They're not really collector's items. They can run forever if you take care of them. You can look at a 32 year old vehicle, at least have a mechanic look at it. And don't buy something like that and think you're going to drive it 20,000 miles a year. Paul Amenike says, I got a 2013 Subaru Legacy. 3.6R with 77,000 miles, no problem. Should I trade it? The six-cylinder boxer engines with three on each side that the Subarus have, those engines, when they get a little bit higher mods than that, often start to fall apart. Now, the four-cylinder ones, no, but the six-cylinder ones are kind of competing with Porsche with horsepower because the Porsche 911s have those six-cylinder boxer engines. Only the Porsche actually makes their six-cylinder engines a lot better than Subaru does. The Subaru six-cylinder engines all start clacking when they get mileage and wearing out. And they're so expensive to fix it. It runs good now, you can get any good money for it, try it in, get something better like a Toyota or a Honda. Shamu Aquarium says, Scotty, thoughts on me trading my 2013 Honda Civic at 95,000 miles for a 2017 Honda Civic or 2016 Accord? What do you want to do? You know, what are you asking me here? <laughs> If that Civic still runs good with 95,000 miles, I've seen it with 395,000 miles. Why would you want to trade it for another Civic if it's running perfectly fine? Now, I could understand the Accord because the Accord rides a lot nicer. It's a much more luxurious car. If you want a more luxurious car, yeah, get an Accord. Go right ahead. You know, I wouldn't go from one Civic to another. So this thing's going to last forever. If you're going for a used car, you're always taking a gamble with a used car. You already own yours, and if you're not having any problems, I wouldn't go Civic to Civic. But if you want to go to a court and upgrade, go right ahead. It's your choice. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.